Hello everybody, how are you? Well, my name is Rahul Parmar and uh, today in this lesson we are going to discuss about the first unit that is fundamentals of economics of advanced bank management <clears throat> which is the first compulsory paper of CIB. So today in this lesson uh, we will discuss about each and everything about the main topics uh, that uh, in exam what what questions will come and what you have to read and what you have to understand so I can say very confidently that if you don't have time for reading uh, line by line from your uh, book textbook that is Macmillan but if you watch that video so that video is sufficient for you okay you have to watch each and everything very carefully you have to understand each and everything uh, then uh, you have to answer at the last some terminal question is there you have to answer the question once you are able to answer the question that is sufficient for you that is my guarantee okay hope so that this video will helpful for you for uh, cracking the exam and uh, you love this video as well as you will share with your friends also okay so without wasting our time we'll start our lesson so let's start our lesson so yeah that is fundamentals of economics unit one fundamentals of economics so today we will discuss about that unit one fundamentals of economics so what is economics okay let, let's start the lesson that what is economics so here economics is the science which studies human behavior as relationship between ends and scarce means having alternative uses so here they given the definition that economics is the science okay in which we studies about human behavior about human behavior relationship between ends and scarce now the two important word is there ends and scarce means having alternative uses now here what does it mean by ends See, ants means wants, human wants. You can say unlimited wants. And what does it mean by scarce? Scarce means those resources, those limited resources, which are not uh, fulfilled, uh, means which are, which are not, uh, you can say that, uh, that limited resources, which are not uh, fulfilling that human wants. And they have alternative uses also. So, uh, in economics, we study about the human behavior, that how we have to cope up, cope up with that problem, that human wants are unlimited, and uh, to fulfill that wants, resources are very limited, and these resources have alternative uses also, okay? So, that is the definition. You can, uh, 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 you can see your textbook also, page number 4, they already given. The same definition scarcity means that available resources scarcity means that available resources are insufficient to satisfy all wants and need okay to satisfy all wants and need then what is the objective so objective to organize production in such a way that there is most efficient use of resources to organize production in such a way that there is most efficient use of resources so the main objective is that that uh, whatever the production you have to organize so that uh, you, you you can efficient use of resources okay because we know that human wants are unlimited and to fulfill that wants uh, resources are very limited and that resources uh, that limited resources also have alternative uses so you have to decide that which is the most efficient use of resources that is the objective okay after then father of modern economics so adam smith is considered as father of modern economics he wrote an inquiry into nature and cause of wealth of nations uh, his book okay he he wrote in book that is an inquiry into nature and cause of wealth of nation and it is uh, written by adam smith in 1776 that is the important in year 1776 okay 
So Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, in his book entitled An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, published in 1776, defined economics as a study of wealth. According to him, the subject matter of economics is the study of how wealth is produced and consumed. Smith's definition is also known as wealth definition. Okay, so we can say that one, that Smith's definition is known as wealth of definition because many economics give in their definition. So, one of the important definition of Adam Smith also as he is considered father of modern economics. Okay, then <clears throat> fundamentals of, yeah, various definition. Now, the various definition given by uh, various uh, economists. So, first one Adam Smith, we already discussed that Adam Smith definition was wealth definition that is more importance to wealth here he given more importance to wealth then Alfred Marshall welfare definition Alfred Marshall given uh, focuses on welfare the science of human welfare we can say that according to professor Alfred Marshall the well-known English economist economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life it is on the one side the study of wealth and on the other side and more important side a part of the study of man. Wealth here means any commodity which gives man satisfaction or utility or welfare. Wealth is the means to welfare. The ultimate purpose or objective of economics is to promote well-being or welfare. So he viewed economics as a science of human welfare hence his definition is known as welfare definition. So according to Alfred Marshall so uh, his definition is the welfare definition so signs of human welfare now Lionel Robbins so he given scarcity definition which covers the following so according to Lionel Robbins economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ants and scarce means which having alternative uses that is the famous definition also given by Lionel Robbins and this definition presents economics as a study of means and ends. As I already told you, means and ends. The means or resources are less in relation to their demand. How men use the scarce resources to fulfill their desire in the subject matter of economics. So, Robbins definition is known as scarcity definition. The definition of Robbins can be analyzed as follows. So, he uh, <coughs> consider some uh, points first of all man has unlimited wants first of all so ends refer to wants human beings have wants which are unlimited all economic activities are undertaken to satisfy human bond man experiences all types of wants such as food clothing shelter education entertainment etc there is no limit to men's want you cannot say that there will be a stage when all the wants of a person are fully satisfied when one want is satisfied, another arises. When another satisfied, then another arises. So we, we know this thing. So man has unlimited wants. We can't fulfill each and every wants. And the limit resources are also limited. So that one is first point. Then second, means to satisfy wants are limited. Means the multiplicity of wants alone will not create an economic problem. If man has unlimited resources, or means to satisfy them there is no economic problem but it is not so the resources are scarce in relation to demand the mere shortage of a supply of a commodity does not make it scarce if there is no demand for it thus proton acts though much fewer than good ones are not scarce in the economic sense on the other hand there may be a huge stocks of a commodity like wheat or coal in the world, yet it is considered scarce because the demand is even greater than the supply. See, if demand is high, but supply is low, definitely resources are scarce. So the important thing is that about the demand. So means to satisfy wants are limited. Then third, the sources have alternative uses. Resources have alternative uses. The scarce means can be put to alternative uses. If a commodity could be put only to one use, no economic problems would arise in its use. If a particular uh, resources have 
particular uses then there is no problem but they have multiple uses suppose if you have 1000 rupees okay now you have unlimited wants you have to do this thing this thing this thing this thing you you want to buy whole world but you can't do like that now you have to see your basic necessities the best example that when your salary came so salary is limited 18k 20k 25k 30k 35k 40k it may be higher also it may be lower also so you want to purchase new fridge also you want to purchase washing machine also you want to purchase share market also you want to invest in mutual fund also you want to uh, go to mumbai you want to go to goa okay you want to spend holidays you want to do so many things but amount is limited salary is limited now then at last what you have to do then you have to decide which is important and which is not important and then from your wants and the limited resources means limited salary then you have to decide which which one is most important to so the same example here also the same example the so consumer has to make choice to how this is say uh, what i give an example here about salary when salary came and you want to do this 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 this, this but you can't do in limited salary and then you have to decide that okay this is important that is the same thing here covers in four points unlimited wants okay you want to do each and everything means to satisfy wants are limited already we know that resources are very limited resources are alternative uses also from that uh, suppose if you have 1000 from that 1000 either you can watch movie either you go for uh, food for uh, any restaurant either you purchase cloth lot of uses and then consumer has to make choice to use these resources means man has to make use of his limited resources to satisfy his unlimited wants he cannot satisfy all his wants with the limited resources these limited resources can be put to alternative uses so every man has to decide which wants he will satisfy now and which he would postpone thus economics is also called a science of choice can say science of choice also so hope so that now you understand fully understand a uh, linus robbins definition that is scarcity definition in which he covers some points okay let's next points okay now microeconomics come now what is microeconomics so microeconomics adam smith is the founder okay then it is concerned with the behavior of individual entities such as firms or household. Okay. It is concerned with the behavior of individual entities such as firms or household. They make decisions as to how to allocate the scarce resources. And microeconomics examine how these decisions affect the supply and demand which determine the price. So, see that there is two branch of economics economics has two branch first one is microeconomics second is macroeconomics so here micro means first of all adam smith is the founder second microeconomics deals with the small small things means firms or household and the important uh, what they have to make decision they are the, the most they, they make decision as to how to allocate the scarce resources so allocation okay between the small small firms or household and microeconomics examines how these decision affect the supply and demand which determine the price because price always depend on the supply and demand if demand is high and supply is less demand is high supply is less automatically price goes high if supply highs demand is less automatically price goes down okay in next chapter we will discuss about supply and demand also very interesting one okay
within a very short time i will upload second lesson also okay so here microeconomics is a branch of economics that studies how household and firms make decisions to allocate limited resources typically in markets where goods or services are being bought and sold microeconomics examines how these decisions and behaviors affect the supply and demand for good goods and services which determine prices and how prices in turn determine the supply and demand for uh, goods and services so microeconomics analyze the market behavior of individual consumers and firms in an attempt to understand the decision making process of firms and households this is microeconomics simply you understand deals with the small 